to thee every minute every hour i need thee every minute every hour i need thee oh bless me now my Savior, I come to Thee. Yes, yes, I need Thee. Yes, oh yes. I need thee, oh bless me now, my Savior, I come to Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it on this Tuesday evening, the Tuesday night Bible class. We're here again, once again, to declare God's word in our studies. I pray that you are ready to receive from the Lord tonight. You're excited to hear from God. I pray that you're walking in victory on today, that you're standing fast and liberty Christ made you free. For no weapon formed against you going to prosper. Every time to rise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Truly, God is faithful. He's our Redeemer and our Sanctifier. And He's able to do exceedingly abundantly but all we can ask or think or imagine. You got to stand fast in the liberty of Christ has made you free. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We're here again, once again, Pastor Charles Emery. This is Pastor Dean Faith Fellowship Church, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I pray you're excited tonight to hear a word from the Lord because God is really ministering to our hearts to help us be mindful of the demonic force that will allow the encounter in our life. And if you're not ready to walk in victory, you'll walk in defeat. And I come to tell you tonight, we're not defeated in Christ Jesus, but we're victorious, the word tells us. We're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But you got to know that for yourself, that you are more than a conqueror. You can defeat the enemy in your life, in any area of your life, if you choose to. The choices that you make will either make or break you. And you have to determine in yourself that I am going to live a victorious life in Christ Jesus. No matter what comes my way, the devil's a liar. He can't stop me from moving in the victory God has for me. Because God has already defeated the enemy through Jesus Christ our Lord on the cross. If he defeated the enemy for you, guess what? Then all you have to do is receive the victory and live in it, abide in it, camp out in it, settle in it, and move in victory every day of your life. So let your conversation be seasoned with salt and grace. That you speak words of life over your situations, over your circumstances, and not words of death. So many times we speak death over our situation, over our finances, over our health, because we begin to doubt God's ability to keep us, even provide for us, because of the circumstances seem to be bigger than our God. But the word tells us, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. You know what that means? If you magnify something, you, you make it bigger than what it appears to be in the natural eye. So God is bigger than what you can see. That's why he tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. Because if you have faith to see what God said you can see, you'll see yourself as an overcomer, an achiever, victorious, prosperous, healthy, victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. Tonight we're going to chapter 4 of our book. We're back in the book again. We'll put it on the screen so you see what I'm talking about. We're in the same book. Breaking the threefold demonic cord. How to discern the lies of Jezebel after Leah and Delilah. 
So that's what we're in. We've been in this book for the last several months. It's a really good book. I've been going from chapter to chapter, breaking the, each part of the chapter down because it's, it's too rich to just fly right through it. So I've been taking my time teaching each lesson from each chapter, section by section. And I pray that you go back and listen to these lessons again on the YouTube channel. It's listed on, on the link, the, the comment link. It's a tag where it got the YouTube channel you can go to to find each one of these lessons I done t taught, even preached on my YouTube channel. Amen. So I encourage you, if you want to sow a seed into the ministry, please sow a seed. You'll see it really does help with the materials that I've used to study as well as for the church. We have a project going forth for our church to expand our church building in the proper timing God provides. So we're looking for donations. If you want to sow a seed into the ministry, the tag is on here as well. You can, you can donate through my cash out, you know, or Facebook stars. You can add that on here and you can do that. And the way you do Facebook stars, you got to attach your debit card or cash out card to the Facebook account. And when you do that, every time you buy a star, you're pulling from your, your resources to pay for the stars. It'd be a, a 500, 200, 100, doesn't matter the amount, even go up to a thousand, you can sow those stars into the ministry. Amen. So we're going to get into prayer in just a moment, but I just want to make that announcement there concerning the sowing donations, whether it's the books, the YouTube channel. Now I pray that these lessons are enriching you in your spirit, that you're learning something on how to discern the lies of Jezebel, Aphelia, and Delilah to defeat those lies because the enemy lies to us all the time. And we begin to believe those lies because they seem to be more outspoken than what God's word says to us. And the reason why is because you're not studying your word. If you study the word, like God said, the study show itself approved, Unto God at work, we need not to be ashamed. Right, divide the word of truth. If you rightly divide the word of truth, the word speaks volumes. It will give you a revelation. It will give you insight. It will give you understanding concerning everything it tells your life. But if you don't want it, you stay blinded. You stay blinded. So I come to let you know tonight that you have to make a choice in yourself that I'm going to continue to move forward in my purpose and the call in my life and trusting God who is the source and the author and finisher of my faith. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you tonight, O oh God, for your presence. We thank you, O oh God, for your power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, O oh God, to will do according to your good pleasure. Have your way, God, in us tonight as we walk by faith and not by sight. Keep us steadfast in the faith. Help us to stand firm in the, in the word, Father, because knowing that the word that defeats the enemy, God, not our words, but your word. Give us discernment. Give us understanding. Give us revelation to see what you see, hear what you hear, and speak what you command us to speak, to silence the voice of reasoning, the voice that's in our minds, oh God, to doubt your word. Even our own voice, we hear ourselves that doubt you, Father God, your ability to save and deliver us in any situation. Now, thank you, Lord God, that your grace is sufficient, that your powers may manifest in our weakness, that we can find our strength in knowing and walking and abiding in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. It's been a beautiful day. Even though it's been raining on and off today, it still was a beautiful day because the Lord is still in control of the weather. He allowed us to get some rain to wash away the, the filth of the earth. But I tell you, when you get a revelation of that word, the word will set you free from the inside out. You got to want it, though. Amen. I'm going to pull up the book in just a moment. Chapter 4. We're in. And I pray this really blesses you tonight because it's really interesting, this chapter 4 as well, confronting Jezebel. When you think about confronting a person or even dealing with spirits, when you confront spirits, so that's what we're dealing with, we're talking about spirits in this book. But it also talks about the spirit in a person because people have spirits in them. And sometimes those spirits become confrontational and want to pull you out of character 
to get you discombobulated, even want to cause an altercation where you want to fight. And we have to learn how to listen. I, I spent at least 20 years in security. And in that field of work, as an officer, we had to learn how to deal with confrontation, even how to communicate. And that's very important in any field of work in your life. Communication and how to confront an individual in the right frame of mind and attitude. Because if you don't have your attitude corrected by the Spirit of God, you find your attitude leading you according to the dictates of the flesh to be confrontational, to cause confusion. We have to allow the Word of God to speak into our hearts that we learn how the Holy Spirit put a bit in our mouth, a brighter on our tongue. Because our mouths are deadly weapons, the Word tells us in chapter James, in James, I think it's chapter 3, chapter 3, I'm about to go through it right now. So this, this is going to be a great lesson tonight. I, I, I hope you're ready for it. I hope you're ready. So get yourself ready for the word tonight. In James chapter 3, verse 8, But the tongue no man can tame. It is an unruly. Isn't that something? Anything that's unruly is what? It's foul. It's messed up. Don't have no control. So the tongue is an unruly evil. Full, it says, of deadly poison. If you don't have self-control over that thing in your mouth called the tongue, when it comes to confronting a spirit, you'll be just like the seven sons of Sceva, who tried to cast out a devil in the name of Paul who cast out, which was Jesus Christ. Because they didn't have relationship with Jesus Christ himself, the demons recognized. Said, Paul I know, John I know, whoever the person was, I forgot what it was, but who were those individuals he named he made it clear that the demons jumped on the seven sons of Sceva and stripped them naked. And because of that, they found themselves defeated and running off naked. Isn't that crazy? But it happens though. You try to, try to do something that God didn't give you the power to do, you're going to find yourself being stripped of the enemy, naked, and running in terror. One thing about God, God is not playing with us. He wants us to wake up. He wants our eyes to be open. Go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Let's go there right quick. In Acts chapter 19, verse 14 to 16, I like to be correct when I say certain scriptures. I'm going to find if I have to find it. That's how I am. It says, verse 14, Acts chapter 19, verse 14. Well, let's start at 13. It said, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, you hear that? When we just talked about this last week, about how this stems from Jezebel, took, up, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you. That's a stern command, adjure. By Jesus whom Paul preaches, In other words, I charge you to speak to me. Tell me who you are. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and of the chief of the and chief of the priest, which did so. 
And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know. Who are you? If you don't know who you are, you don't know how to operate in the power and authority Jesus gave you, the demon's going to ask you the same question, who are you? What you trying to do to me? It ain't going to work. You're not walking your own authority. So how are you going to tell me what you want me to do? You don't even know yourself what to do. Ain't that something? So it says, check this out. Verse 16, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. This same spirit in this possessed man leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house, that house naked and wounded. The enemy will beat you up, strip you of your spiritual garment, he'll leave you naked and in confusion. Because it says he, he stripped them, prevailed against them, and they fled out of the house, naked and wounded. <coughs> Excuse me. We have to pay attention. What voice are you listening to? Let's get into our lesson tonight. This is a good scripture too. This one you need to memorize. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcame them. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. When you recognize that you have the greater one living inside of you, the enemy has no power to control you no matter what he tries to do. He cannot take control of your life at all or even influence you. Glory to God. Amen. So ye have got little children and have overcame them, overcome them. Because great is he, he is in you than he that's in the world. You got to know you got the greater one living in you. The enemy knows when you come to Christ, you have the greater one living inside of you. But do you know it? Do you know you got the greater one inside of you? When your job fires you, when people start confronting you and talking about you and backstabbing you and hurt, hate, hate, hating on you and all that, do you know you have the greater one inside of you? When you become afflicted and it doesn't seem like you'll ever get well, is your confession going to agree with the sickness or are you going to speak the word of God over your condition and command your condition to respond to the word of God? Let's get into this point. We can no longer tolerate the evil influences of Jezebel. We can no longer tolerate, stop tolerating folk who want to keep on springing you gossip. Stop tolerating it. Stop tolerating the evil voices of Jezebel. When it comes to other people to backstab somebody else, or even backstabbing you. Stop tolerating unclean spirits who try to enter into your heart through other avenues. Be careful what you watch on television. Be careful what you hear on the radios. Be careful who you be around. Because everything in this world is not godly. There's so much demonic stuff in this world if you're not careful, it's going to lure you as a bait into a trap, into a dark place. We talked about the death structure because the death structure is a fortress to keep you in darkness. Like putting you in a prison, in a dungeon. If we continue to 
to allow this evil power to operate. The driving force behind abortion, you hear that? Child pornography, the legalization of sexual perversion, increased crimes, illegitimate authority, and immorality will prevail. If we continue to passively go through life, continue to let the enemy bait us with the desires of the flesh to cause us to let our guard down, stop walking in obedience to God's word, you allow the legalization of perversion, not just sexual, but perversion of the heart to be a crime in your life and to seize illegitimate authorities we've been talking about for the last few weeks because that's what anyone wants to do. Seize illegitimate authority into your life to control your life. Immorality will pop up in your heart and cause you to turn your back on God. We have no alternative. We have no alternative but to rise up and battle the occultic spirits behind Jezebel. It's time to fight. We're in a war. Every day we're in a war and we need to remember and remind ourselves we're in a spiritual war. Not flesh against flesh, but, but spirit against the flesh. And that's the Holy Spirit against the demonic flesh that tries to control you through influences of other avenues. The scripture clearly discuss how displeased the Lord if we permit Jezebel to lead his servants astray. Are you one of those not listening to the voice of God? And you follow the immorality of the flesh, the wickedness of the heart? Allow yourself to displease the Lord by your actions? Those bad habits, those strongholds, they are of the occultic spirit of Jezebel. And that will continue to keep you on the outside looking into the kingdom. Jesus said every child of God is in the kingdom, in the kingdom of them. But when you walk in darkness, whose kingdom are you dwelling in? Think about it. If you're not walking in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God, then you're walking and abiding in the kingdom of the enemy. He has a kingdom too. And his kingdom is demonic, it's devils, demons, doctrines that defy the Lord, your living God. Revelation 2.20 it talks about this. If we permit Jezebel to lead my servants astray. We got to identify, recognize that this is of the enemies. It's not of God. The enemy knows if I can get you into a place where you defy God and start walking in obedience, you keep yourself stuck in a heart that's callous, a heart that's rebellious, an unrepentful heart. As we discuss the church of Tyre was rebuked for permitting Jezebel to seduce them into sexual sin and immorality. If we permit such actions today, then the Lord is rebuking us. Ain't that something? Immorality would keep you in a place where you shut God's voice out. You refuse to listen to the voice of God. I tell you one thing about the enemy. He's not playing fair. Listen to this. Immorality is the state or quality of being immoral. Like I said earlier, wickedness. Full of wickedness. 
And if you're full of wickedness, you definitely not going to listen to the voice of God. Because you got blinders on now. And your heart is callous. And you're stuck in a dark place in yourself where you're not letting God come in. Light illuminates. I heard this one point on the radio today which really was good. It says darkness moves at the same pace as light does. But when light illuminates, it expels the darkness. Jesus does exactly that. When we allow the light of the gospel to shine in our hearts, when we were once a victim of the darkness, it expels the darkness out of us and fills it with light, which is the life of Christ dwelling in our midst. If we permit such actions today, then the Lord is also rebuking us. If we know we're out of order with God and we keep on walking in darkness, the Lord rebuke you. And what he's bringing is correction. Word rebuke is correction. He's chastening. He wants you to do better. He wants you to repent. The Lord promises to reward us if we refuse to tolerate Jezebel's influence. Isn't that something how God is even to reward us through his promises if we refuse to keep giving to the voice of Jezebel? Stop being driven by Jezebel. Stop being controlled by Jezebel. And he will empower us to effectively confront her. You cannot effectively confront any demonic force in your life or the life of anyone else. If you are not submitted, yielded, and released to the will of God. Because if you submit to his authority, his rule is reigning in your life, you yield to his authority, walk in his commands, and release every concern every care into his hands, God will show you in the spirit what you need to do to confront the demonic forces that come against you. Stop letting people provoke you to always want to argue over foolish things. Because one thing about the enemy, he loves confusion. He loves to get you out of order, out of character. If he can keep you in a place where you stop missing the voice of God, you keep on being argumental. You argue with the word, argue with scripture, argue with something someone says, that they say it's in the Bible, you say it's not. You got to study your Bible and know the word for yourself. If you need empowerment and wisdom to confront a Jezebel spirit, study your word. If it was a war, Satan wants. Remember that Ashtoreth, we talked about this last week, is known as the goddess of war. She and all her associates are at war with the saints of God. The devil has declared an all-out attack to seduce God's children into spiritual apostasy. You know what apostasy is? To get you abandon your faith. Apostasy is stop following God and following the lies of Jezebel. Following, following false doctrine and teachings. Stuff that satisfies your itching ears. To appease your flesh. Because you don't want to submit to God, so God lets seducing spirit come upon you to control you. Through this goddess of war. We're in a war every day of our life. As soon as you get up out the bed, you're in a war. And that war is to get you to begin to focus on all the pain, the suffering, 
the troubles, the issues, the debts, all the things you have going in your life that the enemy wants you to focus on, to bombard your mindset with so much junk, you don't give God room to enter in. As Christians, all of us are called to be in God's army. You hear that? We're all called to be in God's army. What is an army commissioned to do? This and this. It goes to war to defend the cause. What cause are you defending? Are you defending in your flesh? Are you defending in your spirit? Because defend a cause is something you need to focus on, what you need to defend. It's like the country, the government, they focus on controlling the borders, controlling our nation, and protecting our nation, defending our nation from opposing forces. We need to defend God's kingdom <coughs> Excuse me. from the opposing force of the enemy who comes against your faith in God. Well, God is a God of war. And he has spoken to the warrior inside of each of us. Isn't that good? That's shower news right there. That's shower news. God is the God of war. He has spoken to the warrior inside of each of, of one of us. As believers, we got to know this, that we've been called to defend the cause. And we have God backing us up and going before us. He has called us, his mighty army, to defend his cause. As believers and soldiers in God's army, we must rise up in our godly authority and declare war against the spirit of Jezebel and her idolatry. You hear that? We as believers need to rise up and take authority against these opposing forces. as believers and as soldiers in God's army. We need to be fully equipped every day with the full armor of God to defend for God's kingdom a godly cause. Though the enemy may attempt to gather his troops using his evil devices attached to the idol of Ashtoreth, the goddess of war, he would never, you hear that? He will never be able to defeat God's mighty army. My God, glory to God in the highest. He can never defeat God's army because God's army is strong and the commander of the army is Jesus Christ himself, the captain of the host. We are victorious through Christ Jesus. So gird up your loins. Set your face, faces like a flint towards your victory. You know what a flint is? Like a spark, a flame. Choose life and renew your minds daily. We are victorious through Christ Jesus. Rise up, mighty man and woman of God. Rise up in your God-given authority. Take authority over your mind. Take authority over those influences in your life. Take authority over the demonic forces that have been controlling you through bad habits. Take control over every attack of the enemy that comes against you by speaking and declaring God's word in the atmosphere around you. Create your atmosphere. If you set up an ambush, your perimeter, where your angels are at guard to stand against the wiles of the devil, the enemy cannot penetrate your fortress. He only comes into your fortress, which is your mindset, into your heart when you stop focusing on God. The more you focus on yourself, 
and the things going on in your life and neglect the folks on God, you give the enemy access. Perimeter breach. I remember watching one of these movies, what was it called? It was a Will Smith. It was a movie Will Smith was there too about the government where they had all these satellites. They could zoom in on different people all around the country and they can see everything people were doing in the nation. And also knew the perimeter and the, and how to not allow them to cross certain borders. But there was an alien invasion. And they had to defend the nation against the aliens. And every time the enemy thought he was winning, Will Smith was one who had an idea, even had the boldness and the audacity to rise up against those forces and defeat them and led others into victory because he didn't give up. We have to be the same way in God's kingdom. We have to lead others we know who are weak in their faith, others are struggling with their faith, others dealing with bad habits. Instead of talking about them, instead of putting them down, instead of criticizing them, pray for them. Draw them in by encouraging them. If you see something wrong with an individual in the body of Christ, pray for them. Your prayers, if you're connected in the Spirit of God, will penetrate the heart and even bring conviction where the person will be willing to change eventually. We may never see the change, but one day they will. Because God says this, one planted, one water, but God give the increase. If you let God do his work, and you do your work, change is going to take place. Not just in them, but in you. Because it starts in us first. The change starts right here before it reach anyone else. If I'm not willing to change and set my face like a flint towards the victory, to choose life and live and renew my mind, take the word of God, that I can't expect anybody else to do it. The word says that we are to seek those things which are above. Oh my God, this is a good one too. And set our affections on things above and not on things of the earth. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. That's one scripture you need to memorize. Because that's a powerful scripture. And it keeps reminding you. Every time it comes to your mind, it's going to remind you. you got to keep focusing on God. Set your effects on things above, not on things of the earth. Because the more I focus on God, I see the victory. I see myself an overcomer. I see myself prosperous. I see myself healthy and wealthy. I see myself successful. I see strongholds broken. I see my mind renewed. I see my heart steadfast. I see changes in my life through the power of the Holy Spirit because I focus on God and not on things of the earth. As believers in Christ, we are instructed to rid ourselves of fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affections. evil, concussions, which is, this is nothing but wickedness, strong passion, and covetedness, which is idolatry. We have to rid those things. Get rid of it. Let it go. The more you hold on to the things of the flesh, the more you keep yourself in bondage. And God is trying to set you free, but he can't do his work because you're, you're stuck in a certain cycle of your mind where you have a rebellious spirit that keeps you from walking in order. Because in order that will keep you in a place where you keep on being out of order. One thing about God, God has a remedy for everything. In order affection, it is a term that refers to unhealthy and obsession attachments to a person or things that manifest through uncontrollable love. You know what that is? Uncontrollable love? Idolizing that person? 
making them your idol. So you have a strong passion and a love for that person when you neglect God. You put other people before God. And God is trying to get us to see that you keep walking in that type of way of life, you lead yourself down a pathway of destruction. Because the enemy loves to deceive us and manipulate us from walking in truth. Listen to this. Concupiscence is often associated with desire for earthly pleasures that are contrary to God's will or his Ten Commandments. The enemy knows what he's doing. He knows how to put certain desires in your heart and drive you to a place where you neglect God with a strong passion, a strong fleshly desire to defy God. That's all it is, defying God. It may list other things like sexual sins and all those different things that it mentions in the Bible. Adultery, fornication, lying, stealing, all the stuff it says people do. But it's really the root cause of defying God. If I can get you to defy God, then I can get you on my team. Battling Jezebel. Look at Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Write that down. Colossians 3 and 5. Battling Jezebel then requires to be cleansed from unrighteousness. You hear that? Battling Jezebel. My, my, my. Let me highlight this. This is, this is a good one. Listen to this right here. Right there, this one point. Pay attention to that. Battling Jezebel. So in order to war against Jezebel, you got to be in the right heart posture with God. That's what it's talking about. In order to battle the spirit of Jezebel, to go at war with Jezebel. Don't go into war with something you ain't been trained to do. Everybody's not trained in spiritual warfare. Because spiritual warfare, your life needs to be consecrated. And you need to be surrendered, be submitted, walking in divine order, spending time in fasting and prayer, to get God's attention. And the Lord will train you through his word and the power of the Holy Spirit how to do spiritual warfare accurately. You can try going to spiritual warfare and haven't been trained for it. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get defeated by the enemy. Seven sons of Sceva. If you haven't been properly prayed up, spend time in God's presence, don't try to cast on no spirit. Don't do it. It ain't going to work. The spirit won't jump on you. And you'll find out why you messed up and the other person free. Because you try to do something God didn't tell you to do and he didn't permit you to do. God doesn't permit you to do warfare if you don't know how to do it. If you don't know how to walk in your authority, as Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, he gave us power, he gave authority and power over all the power of the enemy. You have to probably learn how to spend time in God's presence to use that power against the powers of the enemy. Once you learn your authority, learn how to walk in obedience with God's word in righteousness and holiness. You cannot have righteousness without holiness. It works hand in hand. Mercy and grace work hand in hand. We got to put to death our fleshly desires and set our minds on heaven's plan in order to defeat the enemy. So where's your mindset? Where are you? What are you focused on right now? What is your agenda? Are you working in your heart to be submitted to God's cause? Or trying to fulfill your earthly desires, which keep you outside of God's will. Because it's something we have to examine ourselves. We have to take a moment, sometime, look in the mirror, see who you really are. You can look in the natural mirror and see yourself, or you can look in the mirror of the Word. The Word will show you who you are. 
You got a lot of people are hypocrites in the body of Christ say they're serving God, but really they're serving the devil. Because their life line up with the enemy doesn't line with God. Jesus said, wolves and sheep clothing. We have to be kept. Read John chapter 10. Because there's a lot of wolves and sheep clothing who can sound good, can speak in tongues, can quote the Bible. They can do everything a child of God can do. But their MO, their mission order from the enemy is to entice you and deceive you and pull you from Christ. Tearing down versus bowing down. Tearing down versus bowing down. In order to battle Jezebel, we must tear down her false idols. You hear that? In order to tear down Jezebel's kingdom, you have to tear down those false idols. What's a false idol in your life? What is something you've been trusting in that you think was of God but really was of yourself? Jezebel was religious. She bowed down to false images and proved her loyalty to them by murdering the prophets of God. The scripture speaks repeatedly about the evil process of bowing down to any God other than Jehovah. Exodus chapter 23 verse 24 gives specific instructions not to bow down to their false gods. God made it so clear over and over to children of Israel, don't have another God before me, I'm a jealous God, don't bow down to them, don't serve them. But what did they do? God repeatedly said the same thing but because their hearts were prone to do evil, they gave in to the voice of Jezebel. The reason why Jezebel was so easily able to manipulate and control them by her idol worship, to her idol gods, because they turned their heart from hearing God, the true God. If you turn your heart from hearing the true God, then you're not listening to the voice of God, you listen to the enemy's voice. An enemy voice is what voice will keep you on the outside looking into the kingdom. And they keep you itemizing people and things and places as a God in your life. We have to overthrow those gods. Exodus 23 and 24 gives specific instructions not to bow down to their false gods, but overthrow them. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5 states that, that if someone bows down to false idols, the iniquity of the sin is passed down to the third and fourth generation. That's deep. That's deep right there. If someone in your bloodline bow down to idol gods and worship them, it goes to the third and fourth generation. It jumped over the second generation but went to the third and fourth generation. So that same spirit transferred through the bloodline from one generation, next generation, next generation, and they begin to follow the same patterns of idol worship to serve idols. You got some worship crystals, some worship rabbit's foot, some worship, you know, all kinds of items out here in this world people gravitate to, and they serve those things as a god. Lucky charms, it's going to protect me from evil spirits and all this stuff. African figures, they place in their homes, put the war off evil spirits and all that. Not knowing is a gateway to bring the evil spirits in your house. Not excommunicate them, but bring them in. And every time you give in to a seducing spirit, it gives you an idea of what to do, what to gravitate to, what to bring into your house to create an atmosphere for the enemy to come in. We have to really be prayed up and pay attention. Everybody come up to my house. They say the same thing. That I have a peaceful atmosphere. 
I have a one bedroom apartment, got a lot of stuff in it, but it's organized. And when people come in here, they say, you now grew this place, but it's organized and it's peaceful. It's pleasant and it smells good. Why? Because I create an atmosphere for God every day to be in my house. I don't need the enemy when I wake up in the morning, oh, I got a headache, or oh, my neck hurt, or oh, my back hurt, my hip hurt, my foot hurt, my knee hurt. I don't need to magnify those things because I keep magnifying them. I begin to idol, make them idols to worship them. Didn't, didn't know that, did you? You worship your symptoms because you magnify them more than God. The more you talk about the stuff that's wrong with you, you're itemizing it to make it a God. And God has said, I gave you the word. If you speak the word over your symptoms and your conditions and command the way to obey the word, obey the word of God, <coughs> guess what happens? The Holy Spirit gives you revelation. Go take some Tylenol. Sometimes go away instantly by the Spirit. Then sometimes you have to take some substances to help enable the, the healing. But we don't listen to the voice of God. We listen to ourselves. So we find ourselves complaining and murmuring and grumbling like children of Israel in the wilderness, complaining, murmuring, and grumbling about things that's not in their power to change. The reason why God says to go to the third, fourth generation because the first generation was jacked up. They were messed up. They were confused. They were lost in darkness and sin and iniquity. So that same spirit transferred from one generation to the next generation, which caused every generation to be impacted by the same evil influence of Jezebel. My God, this is a good lesson. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's go a little further. In other words, there is a generational curse of iniquity. A generational curse of iniquity because of the bowing down to any false god. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Talk about blessing and curses. If you obey the voice of God, your God and his commands and, and his decrees, then you will be blessed coming in, blessed going out. But he talks about if you disobey the voice of the Lord God and his commands and his decrees, all these curses will come upon you. Because God gives us options. We have choices. Either I'm going to listen and obey, or I'm going to continue to defy the Lord living God's law and decrees and walk in rebellion. Iniquity is defined as perverse and perverted, crooked, to be bound down, troubled, wronged, and wicked. That's what happens to an individual when you bow down to an idol God. You open the gateway for the enemy to come into your heart and distract you and deter you from your promise to keep you in darkness. We got to pay attention, people of God. We got to pay attention because the enemy is waiting on the sidelines looking for a prey. He's like a lion, the words he roars, roars about, roaring like a lion, seeking one to devour. The Hebrew word for iniquity is linked with the word that means twisted and bent. What do we twist? What, what do the enemy twist? What did he do in the Garden of Eden? He twists the word. He quoted the word what God said, but he put a twist in it and a bent in the word to cause them to fall into iniquity. To not listen to the voice of God. They knew they were already creating God's image and likeness, Adam and Eve, right? 
But the enemy came along walking in the garden. This is before he became a snake on his belly. He was walking in the garden. The word says it. He was upright. And he had a conversation. It should have stopped right there when the conversation started. This implies the one bows down, giving place to an idol. He or she has twisted or a bent belief system that is then passed from one generation to another. My God, my God, my God. So when the enemy comes along, he attacks your mindset. Because he knows I can get into thought life and get right here, the thinking process, I can corrupt your mainframe. Because I can put a virus in the mainframe, I can steal all your information and what you trust in, in, in God, and I can twist it with some camouflage information to look and sound like it's from God. So I can change your belief from believing wholeheartedly and following God to it now you're following the flesh desire which turns away from God. Then I keep you in a place where you don't want to repent. Because the enemy knows I can stop you from repenting. Stop you from having a true, sincere heart repentance. I can keep you connected to the bloodline of sin and defeat. But thank God for Jesus Christ, our Savior, who broke the curse on the cross. When he hung on that cross, he broke the bloodline curse of the enemy from trying to violate our new generation. We are a new generation. We're a royal priest of the whole nation unto God, whom God called out of darkness into the mild light to show forth his praise. Because we've been called out. We are the new generation, filled with the Holy Spirit, and that with fire to keep on burning our hearts with desire and passion for the things of God. We're going to stop right here tonight. And I pray you have been inspired tonight with this word and that you're standing firm to faith of Jesus Christ. No matter what comes your way, don't give in to the voice of the enemy. Don't give in to the voice of the enemy. The enemy is looking for you who's not paying attention. I always say it each week. He's looking for the one not paying attention, who's vulnerable, who's a prey. I love watching the jungle movies where you have the lions in the jungle and different, they're looking for their prey and, and they, they crouch down. They slowly move forward little by little till they get close enough in proximity to captivate their prey. And once they see that prey in sight, they get their focus on that thing. When the prey is just not paying attention, the prey is just right there in the jungle just precariously going through life. And what do you do? He pounce on them. Get them by the neck. Because he gets you by the neck. And you know he got you there because you ain't getting away. Because if he gets you by your neck, anybody gets you by your neck when they fight you, they know that's going to take you down. Because that's where your windpipe is. If I can cut off the windpipe, I can take you, take your life. And take you down. And that's what the enemy is doing with God's people. He's going for the juggler burn. He's looking for that place where he can grab you and choke you up and get you all discombobulated and confused in your life. You don't know the up and from down. You get blinded, you get in darkness, and you get back in sin and iniquity. My presence has inspired you to study your word. If you don't have this book, get this book. Get this book, get this book, get this book. I say it again, get this book, because this book is really good. You got to get this book. We're breaking this threefold demonic cord of Israel. Get this book. Add it to your library. You don't have it. Get this book. They're also a Kindle version. They have it on the Kindle version. They also have it on, on the uh, on the iPhones in, in the, in the uh, bookstore. You can find it in there as well. So get this book and you add it to your library. Allow the Spirit of God to minister to your heart. And I guarantee when you do that, you're going to find yourself being liberated in the way you've been thinking about yourself all these years and find yourself being changed from the inside out for the better. 
But Father, in Jesus' name, God, I thank you tonight for this lesson. I pray, oh God, that it has inspired, has edified, has built up in our faith, oh God, and encouraged us to study more, to know who we are and who we are in Christ Jesus, that we walk by faith and not by sight in the promise of your word. And I say you will be glorified from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I do each week, if you don't know Jesus as a part of your sin, the Lord and Savior, I encourage you to get to know him. For the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You can have this life by accepting Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, for he died on the cross for your sins, my sin, the whole world. He died for us all that we might be born again to a new life that's found in relationship by connecting with him by the Holy Spirit. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that now yourself is the gift of God, not a works lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. And you can receive this new life by praying this simple prayer with me tonight. You might be a backslider. You might have strayed away once walked the Lord and somewhere fell off the track. But you can come back tonight by praying this simple prayer and be restored as if you never left. Because God said you take our sins as far as the east to the west to remember no more. So repeat after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, known and unknown sins, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank all of you for joining in tonight. Those of you on this live, spread the, this lesson around. If you know someone that might need to hear it, spread it with them. And allow it to minister to their hearts, to help bring change in their lives, make them aware and ident be able to identify and discern the lies of Jezebel, Ethel, and Delilah in their life, as well as learn to know what idols they have been submitted to unconsciously. Sometimes we do things unconsciously. But the Holy Spirit will reveal to you when you're born again what is not of God and what is of God in your life that's an idol. Amen? So you stay encouraged. The Lord says the same. We'll be back again next week, Tuesday, 6 o'clock hour. To start all over again to finish what we just started with well, chapter 4. When chapter 4 in the book tonight, just begin chapter 4. And I, I pray that you continue to be edified in your faith. Continue to grow in grace. And the knowledge of who he is in your life. Amen. If you want to sow a seed into the ministry, feel free to do so by Facebook stars. I thank you for those who did so. Facebook stars on here tonight. I pray you stay enriched in your spirit and continue to, to study the word of God. Get it in your spirit. Wake up in the morning. Tell God thank you. Get a scripture in the morning. And allow that word to minister to your heart. Even just Psalm 23, Psalm 91. A good scripture to start out your day with. And allow that word to minister to you. And I guarantee when you do, you find your heart filled with joy to make it through the day, through the challenges, through the tests, the trials, the attacks that we come. And you find yourself not being discombobulated, confused, or pulled out of character because you allow the Spirit of God to bring you self discipline and self control by submitting to the word. And when you speak, the Lord himself will speak for you through the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift his counsel upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. Until next week, you have a great night. God bless everyone. Shalom. <laughs>